Hello. I am Gentle Lee ASMR, and today I will be answering some of your questions about me. Let's begin. The first question comes to us from Boot Skull, and the first part of the question is, how were you first introduced to ASMR? There's kind of two distinct moments that I consider to be answers to that question. The first is when I had my first experience with the sensation of ASMR itself. That was in Sunday school, back when I was a little kid. The woman who would deliver the lessons at our Sunday school had a magnificent, soft speaking voice, and I looked forward to going to Sunday school. Every week I thought it was always the best part of going to church. And the worst part was the fact that I couldn't take a nap afterwards. <laughs> but I would just, I would just sit there and listen to her talk and get uh, tingles all down my head. Um, so that, that would be what I consider to be my first physical experience with ASMR. Um, as far as the actual labeled term itself. Um, so I've, I've been chronically online from a very young age. And I've been on YouTube for a very long time. Um, and I think there just came some point where it just kind of clicked where, you know, some of these videos I find really relaxing. Maybe I could search a relaxing video to get relaxed on purpose. <laughs> and so, um, the first ever ASMR video that I encountered was, um, oh, such a good, um, ASMR video, something like that. I'll link that video in the description, although I'm sure most of you have seen it. It's a classic. <laughs> I checked, um, and realized recently that I've been listening to ASMR for eight years, which is really surprising. Um, that seems like a really long time. But I've, I've listened to it pretty consistently all that time, and I've kind of stood around the idea of making my own, and eventually went through with next part of the question is, what is my first favorite ASMR trigger? I think I'm going to put a little clip of that in the corner, which is Queen of Serene's Floral Foam. I adore that sound. I watched that video over and over and over when I was first getting into ASMR. And the last part of the question. Did you know that a banana is a berry? I had to think about this one. And I think if somebody came up and asked me, is a banana a berry? I think I would hem and haw and eventually answer yes, because I know that a cucumber is a berry, and I think I would be able to extrapolate from that that a banana would also technically be a berry. Thank you very much, Boot Skull. Those were fun questions. Next is 
from Bill Rodriguez, who asks, what are your hobbies and interests? My number one passion is my animals. You've maybe already seen them featured in previous videos, but they really are my life. They make me very happy, and tending to them is really my reason for getting up in the morning. Besides that, I'm a bit of a nerd, and I enjoy um, various things like gaming and cartoons and anime and um, uh, various streamers. I um, am a big fan of vine sauce, especially. I've been a fan of vine sauce from probably as long as I've been watching ASMR. I also enjoy a lot of forms of art making. Um, I like to draw. I occasionally like to remaster music um, and remix. I um, photograph, especially nature, photography. And, of course, I edit videos. Thank you very much for your question, Bill. Radu N. asks, I would like to know if ASMR has helped you get through a difficult phase, if it has benefited you in any way. I would say, absolutely. ASMR was there through what I consider to be my lowest point in life, which was when I was 14 before I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Undiagnosed diabetes can make a person extremely depressed, and that happened to me. I was at a very, very low point in early high school and watching ASMR videos was really one of my few coping strategies. It really did provide a tether during that difficult time, which was fortunately resolved when I finally received the medication that I needed. The next part of their question is, if corona and its consequences have had an impact on your psychological well-being. I consider myself to be very lucky. Um, I, uh, my family generally believes in um, health guidelines and has therefore not gotten sick. Um, so I haven't experienced any direct loss in that way, and not among my close friends either. It's really only um, some members of the community that I know of who have lost their lives from COVID, which is a real shame but I feel very grateful that it has not um, touched my life very directly. Also, I um, enjoy being inside. I enjoy not having to go out to social obligations. I enjoy having valid excuses not to do those things. Uh, while I wouldn't necessarily say I've been thriving, I have at least been doing pretty well. I haven't really minded the effects, socially at least. 
Thank you so much for your questions. Finn asks, Have you ever made someone feel relaxed unintentionally through your voice? I'm not sure about that one. I feel like if that happens, they don't necessarily tell me. They've, a, f a few times uh, people have commented that they like my voice when, um, one thing that I hear sometimes is that I have a, a good voice for NPR, <laughs> which I like that, com that compliment, that's one of my favorites. Um, but hey, mostly, mostly my memories are other people doing that to me instead of instead of the other way around. Um, and have I used ASMR techniques before without knowing it? Um, well, um, there is, <laughs> I remember in elementary school, there was this, um, there was this girl who tended to just kind of it's like, it's like slowly run her fingers along the back of whoever she was sitting behind. And I made a point to always sit in front of her whenever I could. <laughs> I loved that feeling of it to this day, just slow, gentle touches are one of my absolute favorite ASMR put me right to sleep. Thank you very much for your question, Finn. Annabelle asks, in your wheelchair video, you mentioned college. What did you study? I have a BFA in art and technology. And I consider myself to be an animator. I decided against a traditional animation career trajectory when I became disabled in college. Um, the current state of the animation industry not great. Um, pretty exploitative. Um, and the kind of expectations that they impose make me believe that I wouldn't necessarily be a competitive prospect if I was to try and apply just yet. So, I am currently spending time making my own kind of content, like this ASMR channel you see before you. Another part of the question is, I want to know more about all I will start in order of acquisition. The first is Snuffkin, or Snuffy the cat. He is my beloved kitty son. He follows me around and is very vocal. I have to put him away in, in his own little room when I record so he doesn't, doesn't cry at me and disrupt the recordings. He's a real sweetheart and I love him very much. I call him my puppy because he acts a little like a dog. He goes on walks and he um, eats pretty much any food <laughs> like potatoes. 
potato chips and fries. He loves potatoes for some reason. He's a real silly kitty and I love him very much. The next pet I got after him is Daisy the snake. Daisy was acquired a little over a year ago and is um, I think she is about two feet long now. She is a very sweet snake but doesn't do much because snakes in general don't do much. After Daisy, I acquired my rats. I originally began keeping rats in order to produce my own food for Daisy because I disliked the conditions that the rats at pet stores and reptile specialty stores were being kept in and I thought I could give them a much nicer life before their eventual fate. And I really fell in love with those little guys. Each of them has their own very distinct personality and quirks. I currently have nine rats. Unfortunately, their lives are very short, only about two to four years in the long term if you're lucky. And they are subject to a lot of health issues, which can make caring for them kind of heart-wrenching. I wouldn't suggest rats as a beginner pet. I would instead suggest them to someone who is fairly used to caring for as well as loss of beloved pets. After the rats, I got Boo the ferret. I was very sad one night and looked on Craigslist for the word ferret and there he was, $100 with his Marshall Mansion cage. I am very happy that I picked him up. The previous owner tried to do their best for him, but was limited by their two young children, and so he was kept inside his cage most of the time. Now he gets to run around whenever he likes and doesn't even have Those are all of my pets. Thank you very much for your question, Annabelle. Owen asks, do you play video games? I do play video games. I was raised on video games from a very young age. The first video game I remember liking Probably Katamari 
Damasi. Or actually, we love Katamari for PS2. I love that game to this day. I love the music, I love the visuals, I love how it feels. It is such a fun game. Except the freaking fire level. God, I hate that fire level. <laughs> um, I tend to play Nintendo games because that is just the console that I happen to own. Or the Switch, that is. Um, my top three favorite game franchises in order. I say franchise because I don't want to pick between the individual games, that's just too hard. The first is Portal. I love the Portal games, really, especially Portal 2. I've played that game many, many, many times and I can just kind of, anytime I open it up again, I just kind of muscle memory my way through. Um, I wish they would make a third, but, well, maybe one day. The second is Earthbound, or the Mother series, specifically two and three. I I feel like I could write a dissertation on those games <laughs> and their cultural impacts because um, those those two games just kind of um, kind of unleashed a pop culture shockwave that I feel like people don't necessarily always realize because um, so much pop culture is spawned directly from Earthbound, like um, Undertale, for example, and Homestuck. All of those things directly spawned from Earthbound parodies. My third favorite game franchise is Animal Crossing. I really wish they would update New Horizons already. I feel pretty ripped off. Thank you for your question, Owen. Angela asks, what animal would you become for one day? That's an interesting question because that's different from just what animal would you choose to become? Because if you only have one day, then I would want something with a more unique experience than something, than an experience that I would want long term. So I think for one day, I would choose to be a gibbon. Because I just want to know what it's like to be able to move and swing throughout just pretty much any surface possible with just zero effort and just be made to do that. Seeing gibbons brachiating around is a very impressive sight. So for one day, I would choose to be a gibbon. Thank you for your question, Angela. Daryl asks, what did you learn from your father? I would say an important lesson that he taught me is that cultivating any skill can have unexpected benefits and no acquisition of ability is a waste of time. One story that I think illustrates this very well, is that part of the reason he found success in his career was because his managers appreciated 
that he played in a rock cover band. And that really opened up many possibilities that you wouldn't necessarily have expected through that kind of hobby. Doing things that other people are interested in is always a fruitful endeavor. That is a very helpful lesson that I learned from my father. The next part of the question is what would the title of my autobiography be? I'm afraid you are asking me to put a hat on a body that doesn't exist. I can't title things before they are made because I want the title to resonate with whatever is inside, have some kind of poetic reflection to the text, some kind of reference to what is within, and I wouldn't be able to simulate that without actually writing the book. I like writing quite a lot and consider myself to be pretty good at it and hope to one day actually write a memoir. The next part of the question is, are you a homebody or do you prefer to go out when possible? Definitely a homebody. I am someone who is much more likely to be thinking about how I can get out of a social obligation than looking forward to it beforehand. That's just the kind of person I am. I'm very introverted and have a very low battery for social interaction. Thank you for your questions, Daryl. Rebecca asks, who are your favorite ASM artists? My first ever favorite was Gentle Whispering ASMR. I definitely watched a lot of her videos before branching out to anyone else. You'll probably notice by my list that I have a strong preference for accented voices. So some of my favorites include Today ASMR, Ting Ting ASMR, African Rosa ASMR, ASMR Planet, and Whispers Red ASMR. I would consider those channels to be my favorite. So, as you can see, I have a preference for female accented voices. I kind of already covered the second part of the question, so do I like to read and what kind of books, if so? Yes, I do like to read. Um, my mom is a librarian and I was kind of brought up in a culture of reading. And um, I, I consume graphic novels ravenously if I get a graphic novel in front of me, it will be, it will be, um, read and analyzed in about, like, 12 hours. Um, I also, um, enjoy reading just, um, several, um, uh, fiction staples like Kurt Vonnegut, Neil Gaiman, um, Ray Bradbury, and I also really enjoy um, nonfiction. I would actually say I probably read a lot more nonfiction than I do fiction. And I, um, I particularly gravitate towards the genre that I refer to as horrifying nonfiction. <laughs> um, definitely my favorite book 
of that variety is Educated by Tara Westover, which is a very riveting story about a very atypical upbringing. And um, it does contain some graphic content, so um, if you may be sensitive to that kind of thing, perhaps look into it before diving in. So, yeah, um, thank you so much for your questions, Rebecca. I really appreciate the comments that you left me, and I hope you enjoyed hearing my responses. And I sincerely hope that you have a very, very good